Welcome to Rebel Speak and be encouraged. And today I want to just speak an encouraging word about the organic nature of God's salvation. Um, how deep and wide and all-embracing God's salvation is. When, when the world was made, God said it was good. Right? It, it, it was made in, out of God, out of God's mouth. It was proclaimed and it was spoken. And each of the days, God says it is good until he makes kind of this single human being. And then it's like, well, humanity needs to be relational. And so the, the, the little mud, mud person is separate into male and female. And then it's good. It's good. <laughs> very good, I believe. That's the word, very good. And so there's this nurturing of, of God and God's mindfulness of creation. And I, I, and I hearken to Genesis 6 a lot because it's, it's just such an important storyline that God makes humanity. Um, Greg Boyd has a book called, it's a Letters to His Father, but I think it's called Letters to a Skeptic. But he, I think more than anything I've read, really helped me think about free will and how powerful that he talks about, maybe it's his daughter, but maybe a child, that like if I gave them money to spend and I could say they could buy it, spend it on anything, but they only had, only I only had things I wanted them to spend the money on available to them. They, they don't really have that joy of making that decision, right? That we're made in God's image and we have a, a full, all that's possible to choose from, we get to choose from. And, and from the start, we choose to listen to lesser things, a serpent. We choose to want uh, to be equal to the one that made us in a way that's dishonest about our finitude. We don't like our finitude, we want to transcend our finitude. And as we make these choices, right, that we that we, we, we make these choices, they have deep ramifications because our own self-will just grows, right? We're not in right alignment with God. We, we worship ourselves, fall in love with our own yearnings, consider those yearnings more important than anything else, right? Like, I need, I need. I don't know if you're, um, what about Bob Lover? It's one of my very favorite movies, but I need, I need. In, in real ways, we take. We kill, we distort the truth, we deceive ourselves, we deceive others. And by Genesis 6, there's this world that's just horrible. I don't know if you've ever had that, where you invested into something and it became something truly horrible. I, I did have that in my 20s once. I was trying to help some people and I, I just was in over my head. And I became a part of something that wasn't good and was bad. And God got me out of it because God's so gracious. So here in Genesis 6, there's God and God's in this situation where God made this thing that God knew was good, it brought delight, <laughs> it brought joy, it brought contentment. I, <laughs> I'm kind of in, I'm jumping ahead because there's this Hosea 9, 10, verse that I just happened on a few days ago that I'm just crazy for because it's it's talking to them in the context of sin but it's saying wow when I first met your four parents I was just so in love with them I was so excited you know to greet them and the freshness of spring you know where they're in the desert and all of a sudden there's a bit of life and that joy and God's like likening his love for the his early relationship with Abraham I don't know a people that he was looking to say yes because I did jump ahead Nonlinear here, <laughs> because in Genesis 6, he, he looks at this thing he has so deeply loved, and it's just you know, like, right, there's nothing like, you know, it, it, he doesn't recognize himself, like, where am I in you? And then he has a plan to just end it. And then there's this man who, in the midst of all that chaos, right, I recently heard a sermon on that that just so touched me, in the midst of all the sin, like the wretched, 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 amoral reality of, of a non-God-fearing Ooh, the human exploiting world there's this righteous man just this righteous man and God sees him and God remembers how much God loves no, no I don't I don't really want to destroy this amazing creation 
one so Noah builds a, an ark. <laughs> and God has this just deep love. There's a Christmas hymn, Joy to the World, and one of the lines in Joy to the World is that, it, um, I don't remember the part, part of this, I just remember, far as the curse is found, that through Christ, the baby, that comes so vulnerable to earth, the work of the cross, that, that overcoming of our perversion towards sin and the manifestations of that perversion that we can't get beyond, Christ makes a way and the Holy Spirit comes in and lives in us and we in him. And it, it brings righteousness as far as the curse is found and that, that, that curse is found far. And today it was just kind of a, as I was praying, I was like, wow, I'm not sure what I want to do with this, but I, I really felt to read it and to think about the deeply organic way. Our sins resist God in, a, in a, an abundance, a plethora of ways. It creates havocs and havoc and not a one-to-one -one outcome. There's a way that sin destroys where love creates, where, where, where God creates, right? God speaks words of creation, sin destroys. My heart is broken because of the false prophets. Okay, so these are people that are speaking on behalf of God, but they're not speaking what God's saying. So what kind of prophet are you when you're speaking on behalf of God, but you're not hearing what God's saying and you're not speaking what God's saying? And I tremble, this is Jeremiah, okay? My heart is broken because of the false prophets and I tremble uncontrollably, uncontrollably, bleed. Oh my goodness, sorry. Okay, Jeremiah is seeing something that is so frightening to him and so disturbing. He, he's shaking. He's going to liken himself to someone who's drunk and can't walk straight. The terror, like someone overcome by wine because of the holy words Yahweh has spoken against these false prophets. It's not small words. God's speaking harshly against these false prophets or who are leading people terribly astray from the truth and from redemption, from righteousness, from, from good, what's good and right and true living. Oof. For the land is full of adultery, unfaithfulness, corruption. This is the image. There's this deep, committed relationship that God's been feeding for years and years and years and is adapted and fed and worked around and worked with and worked on behalf of. And it means nothing. The relationship means nothing. And, and God's worked at a great disadvantage to God. God's wanted to see it through. God's wanted, and we all know that God will see it through and God will bring it to fulfillment. But in this moment, it's very important that when we meet the rage of God, we are not misunderstanding the heartbreak, the heart wrenching. How do I respond to you in your sin as you're aligned with me? And you're not just tearing my name down, you're tearing my personhood down. I am one who's attached to you, who's thoroughly unfaithful to me. And all that that involves. The land is full of adultery. Okay. There's something about humanity that's crushing the land. The land lies under a curse. The behavior of humans on the land is deeply, deeply destructive. The land itself is in mourning. I just want to see the, the whole organic nature of this. This isn't pantheism. It's not spirits are in mourning. It's the, the land created by the creator, the land that worships, right? The trees clap their hands. Jesus tells us that if, 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 if he wasn't worshiped, the stones themselves, they see Christ. They would shout out. It's such a right response. Righteousness is such a right response. And the land itself, right? The blood of Abel cried out from the land. The, the treachery of our sin 
gets into the land itself and is destructive. For the land is full of adultery and it lies under a curse. The land itself is in mourning. The land's weeping. The land's weeping. It's weeping for that which is being done upon it. Its pastures are dried up. It just, it can't even grow grass. Like it, it, it can't be all that it's meant to be. It can't flourish. The land itself feels the heinous weight of human atrocity. For the prophets do evil and abuse their power. Why is the land in this predicament? Because the prophets, the, one, the ones who should be speaking life, are speaking death. They're cursing, they're lying, they're deceiving themselves. I, I don't even know that kind of self-deception. I've had a little bit of self-deception, but that where you lose all ability to be honest with yourself and you condemn and you promise things that aren't true. And I, like, when did that happen? There's a great scene at the end of the firm and what's his name, Gene? I won't remember the actor's name, but it's such a good moment because they're like, Are you, what's going to happen to you? And he's like, whatever they've done, they did it a long time ago. And he, 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 he'd, become, he'd become something despicable in his own eyes. And it happened like, you know, little bit by little bit, manipulation and love of wealth. And it had happened a long while ago. These prophets and priests, why is the earth mourning? Because these prophets and priests are deceptive. For the prophets do evil and abuse their power. For the prophets do evil and abuse their power. They have real power. People with real power that abuse that power create a world that the earth itself, the land itself, it could even, I think we can also say the nation itself, that this, this thing that's meant to be a blessing, human community, human relationship, human um, identifying, identifying with one another in, a, in an enclave, in the very earth, the very land of that enclave of commitment lies under a curse. The land itself is in mourning Mm. its pastures are dried up where there should be life there's lack of life for the prophets do evil and abuse their power where there are prophets doing evil and abusing their power this is what happens to the land and I, I want to speak to you and to me I have a be encouraged that your and my blessing is greater than the prophets in our land right now who are abusing their power. There are prophets in the land right now, as I speak, that are doing evil and that are abusing their power and they're crushing nations. There are prophets in the land of each and every nation behaving in a way that's crushing the nation, that's abusing the land such that the pastures, the points of financial vibrance are dried up such that the land is full of adultery, behavior that has, is not faithful in any way to God and God's righteousness, such that the land lies under a curse. It's, it's falling apart. The wagons are falling off the cart, so to say. It, 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 it's not flourishing. But you and I are followers of Christ, and we have the word of Christ in us that goes out far as the curse is found. And we can't just color over. We can't take a picture and paint over it, if you want to think of like a... We can't paint over it, but we can speak like God spoke into creation. We can speak life. We can speak life in actions. We can speak life in defying, like um, Jeremiah has to speak to these proud-filled false prophets. <laughs> we can speak about the evil and the abuse, but we can also love. We can love, we can reclaim through love. There's many ways we're led. 
we, we have Christ in us and it's greater, right? The land is hurting. I'm in a nation right now where the beaches have been closed for far more than a, a year. And sometimes when I walk along the, the beaches, I, I, I feel this little thing in my heart, like the beaches are sad. They miss the people. Because when the beaches are open here in the Bay of Maputo, it is so beautiful. <laughs> That's all I can say. Full of humans on a hot, humid day. But now it's just lingering there. Plants are growing <laughs> on the sand. And I feel it. The beaches are missing the people. And I, I pray that the beaches open soon. I, I pray. I pray that. And I, I'm just speaking about how the land responds. How the land is meant to be vibrant. How the land's meant to be alive. And you and I can speak that vibrance. We can speak that flourishing. We're called at different levels, right? Some of us get to speak that in love to children. <laughs> Very powerful. Never let anyone, right? Why do I love Dorka? Because she's doing something that the world would assess as small. And Paul sees it as eternal. Peter sees it as eternal and brings her back to life. It's a powerful, he has eyes to see. Yeah, it's important. Not just kind of say, oh, we love we love the people that clean the church or we love the people that want. No, you, hopefully you're in a body that whew, really cherishes, really honors, really lifts up. Anyway, there's lots of different ways that Christ in us addresses leadership in lands. We're false prophets. And I'm not, I just, I don't know, I want to say I'm not a against the beaches being closed. I'm just praying for their opening. <laughs> I'm not, I don't even begin to, to know. It's just, I know that there's a prayer in me that the beaches be open and be brought. The beaches miss the people. I know that, I know that, that's a prayer. I know that you and I are a voice of life. We're a voice of life where things are broken. Far as that curse is found, right? I, I don't think we have to always draw one-to-one -one lines of causation, but I think there are people that are out there seeking justice. They are, they are justice pursuers, and they are going to find ways because God does hold evil to account. God's faithful in that. God's faithful in that. Don't, don't forget that. Don't, don't think that God's not out there holding evil to account. All of Scripture, all of Scripture gives witness to that. <laughs> be encouraged. Be blessed and be encouraged. Because through you, God is deeply working and speaking to the land in which you live. To the land, that, the lands perhaps that you love. You are speaking a new word where, where the adultery of the false prophets has brought forth dried up pasture lands. You and I are speaking a far greater word, right? Christ in us is speaking a far greater word than that curse. Christ has overcome that curse in the land and you and I are proclaiming righteousness through actions, through, I think, argument. I feel that. There are many of us, I'm not sure I'm one of them, but there are many out there, many of you, who God has speaking righteously, righteously and boldly, Paul goes far with the word is the word of his witness is spoken out because he's a wit arrested. It gets into courts. Mm -hmm. It gets to places it otherwise wouldn't have gotten to. And it's the real word. It's the real word that breaks down walls and delivers the people and the land, the, the holistic, right? The holistic. All of creation is good. All of creation is redeemed through the work of the cross. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Take care.